Yeah, so um, first, in, in order to um, understand exactly how they're done, we must say again or get back to uh, the first session where I said what is exactly is the fourth dimension. And in order to use the fourth dimension, we either have to use a 3D printed object and um, implement 4D mechanics or, or, or criteria in it, or on the other side, what is doable and very easy to apply, uh, which is the, the use of shape memory polymers. Now, the aligners in general that are used in the field, they have shape memory characteristics by one way or another, but they do not have the right criteria that we need in order to fulfill that. And that's why we need like certain kind of processing for this material, or let's, let's call it like material hack. Uh, and certain kinds of material would accept that. Um, now to do that, you, you need to understand the following, is that it, it's like moving the material to an unstable state. Any, any material in the world, you could move it to an unstable state and uh, try to fix the shape in this unstable state and then you try to activate it to move back again from this unstable state back to a stable state. So it's like it releases the energy inside the material and produces thus while doing that produce like kinetic um, energy or, or shape shifting. Yeah, so as I've been saying before that actually this method for um, manufacturing 4D dynamic aligners, it will be the future of orthodontics, whatever we want. I mean, it's an ecosystem that is built to fit in any kind of material uh, that accepts shape shifting. And it just doesn't come only with an economical factor by decreasing the price, but most importantly is that it increases the smartness of our treatments by many folds. And to do that, you have to first imagine with me very quickly. Now, the normal or standard that we do is that you thermoform like, um, the aligner material on uh, model number one, for example, and you call aligner number one, then on number two, you call it aligner number two and three and so on. Um, with this technique now, we're going to do something quite different, which is that let's assume now that you will thermoform the aligner on number five, model number five, and then you will use this aligner and try to fit it on model number one. Sounds absurd for sure. Um, however, what you can do is that it, you have to heat it to a certain temperature in order to do that and adapt it on number one. And then after that, um, this aligner will fit in the patient's mouth really easy. And then you need like a specific temperature or uh, let's say like heat or whatever in order to change the shape of the aligner from one form back again to the original form where it was thermoformed on. And this is by this, by this technique, you could move um, through gradual temperatures to uh, shape number two, shape number three, four, five, and, and then five eventually. So by this, by this um, cascade of activations, um, which later we will be calling them like boosting the aligners using something called aligner booster. Uh, these, by this technique, you will be able to cut the use of all these aligners in between and you're going to use just one aligner that will be used throughout the whole process.